Hi, this is Mindrunner, and welcome to Mental Health Monday's first episode. I got a chance to chat with one of my favorite people that I've met online, the Reverend Warlock, and we had a really good chat talking about um, overcoming adversity, the power of laughter, even dark humor, and not giving up on yourself, and the power of positivity and community. So definitely check it out. Uh, we had a great time talking a lot, and uh, I'm sure, at least I hope, you'll enjoy it as well. Let me know in the comments, and make sure you stick around at the end and follow the Reverend on Twitter. Like, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I hope your week is great. Well, hey, Reverend Warlock, thanks for uh, joining me for this chat, and uh, I appreciate you popping on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, um, You and I have been back and forth, uh, mostly on Twitter, and, mm -hmm. um, which is such a delightful, positive, sunshiny place to, to meet. Oh, isn't it great? <laughs> Everybody I, gets along. Oh, man, especially now that uh, Musk has taken over. I think oh. I think <laughs> I think that when he bought it, they forgot to tell him not to feed it after midnight or something. <laughs> yeah. And don't, yeah, don't get it wet. Don't feed it after midnight. And mm -hmm. just, yeah, it's, it's kind of the Wild West, which... I, I guess the original creator of Twitter kind of envisioned, but I don't think he envisioned this Wild West. You know, like <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of. Uh, I mean, it's almost like like you said, if you feed him after midnight. The the trolls I think have gotten um, multiplied and they've gotten a little bit more emboldened. Yeah, say? I was gonna say they they feel there's definitely more empowerment there. Yeah, it's 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 pretty incredible, but I. I will say that the mute and block button um, do still work and make for somewhat of a nice time. Mine are getting worn out at this point. <laughs> when your block list is bigger than your follow list, mm -hmm. that, that that could be um, a lot of a lot of frustration. I do want to get into some of our some of your more more recent uh, um, battles, if you will. Uh, but I, I wanted to kind of first just kind of talk to you, you know. You and I kind of got to know each other through Twitter and mm -hmm. back and forth. Kind of, I, I, I kind of threw AEW wrestling or kind of wrestling in general, but kind of not. I mean, yeah, I it's know. that was one of the things that I noticed about the when I got onto Twitter is I was doing a lot of chatting with wrestling fans because mm -hmm. I'm a lifelong wrestling fan. Uh, I've been watching since 1979, if you can oh, believe nice. that. Um, and so many of the people that I was interacting with on a uh, we're wrestling fans basis started to become close friends mm -hmm. and people that like we became friends beyond just, yeah, we like the same wrestler. Um, and that was, I think the beauty of Twitter yeah. uh, for me when I was first on there and those who don't know, I had to take a hiatus uh, for about six, eight months. Um, because well, I got kicked off for a stupid reason. But <laughs> well, was it a blessing in disguise, though? I mean, do you feel like that time off maybe there was some good in it, or there definitely was? But on the surface, it doesn't sound like it. Like yeah. what I went through when I was not on Twitter mm -hmm. uh, literally involved me um, having a complete mental breakdown, mm -hmm. charging a police officer. <laughs> Yeah, me. Um, it was, which is actually one of the funniest stories I have, and I've wanted to tell it for so long. But it's like, how do I frame this as a funny story? You know, <laughs> well, it's already funny. It's Reverend Warlock going after the popo. You know, it's like I'm what 120 pounds, maybe, <laughs> if I'm wearing heavy boots, and you know, there's this dude who's young, strapping in his 30s, is, has 14 different types of weapons that he can take me down with. And I rushed the poor guy, and he looked scared. <laughs> <laughs> like, he had this look on his face, like, oh, my God, what's going on? Well, it's like, it, he probably was thinking, like, well, this guy's got nothing. This guy's coming at me. He's he's obviously sees what I've got, and he doesn't care. So, And the funny thing, the funny thing was, like, I didn't even touch him. Like, a step or two before I got right up to him, I realized what I was doing, and I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'll get on the ground now. <laughs> Because I was <laughs> gone at that point. Oh my goodness! What led up to it? Was it just like, or is it 
is it something that he said or is it something going on? And no, um, clicked with you? I was, uh, I had been completely cut off from any sort of support group. Mm. And, um, you know, with the dealing with the brain cancer and dealing with the strokes and everything, it was like, I didn't even have friends coming over. Oh. Um, you know, I just sit here in my room because that's really all I can do half the time because my legs don't work. Um, they do sometimes, but not always. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just one of those. I'm at my wit's end. I, I'm literally going stir crazy. And I'd effectively been stuck at my house since we went into quarantine. I can't imagine. I mean, a lot of us take kind of take that for granted, you know, the, when the lockdown went down but in like your situation it's probably compounded mm -hmm. obviously and then being cut off from like we're one of your only social outlets being twitter being cut off from that oh, i can't mm -hmm. imagine yeah i mean I, I i think anybody in their right mind would would lose it at that no point. i'm in my left mind so <laughs> there you go good answer but uh, yeah, that, that's and and for folks that aren't familiar with yeah, I mean that that's one of the things I I discovered about you online and and if I don't if you don't mind and if you don't mind taking a compliment, mm -hmm. um, you uh, just kind of inspired me a lot and 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 we, a lot of times I don't think we realize mm -hmm. when we're posting we're throwing stuff out there or we're just interacting I don't think we realize you know just. We, uh, the emptiest cans make the most noise. That was my grandfather used to say. And it, it, what I mean by that is usually we hear the most negative mm -hmm. stuff be, is the loudest. Uh, we tend to miss, like, the, even we tend to not even think about who's listening or who's paying attention. And, yeah, I had, I was in a dark place a couple times and for a while. And, and of course, but then, you know, it's it's so funny when I say, when I say that. And then I, I remember I was I was really feeling down and just like helpless and hopeless. And then I remember I'm like, well, wait a second. The reverend is he's got his situation and he's not letting that stop him from being him. You know, he's still interacting, still being, you know, like, you know, it's it's like I was like, why? Why am I? I felt like such a such a weakling for just for letting stuff get to me. And, and again, it is all, everything's all relative, but it's just mm -hmm. me. I felt like, well, you know, almost pick yourself up by your bootstraps. If war Warlock can keep going, you better get keep going. And that, well, the, the way I look at it is, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt. Go ahead. That's, that was pretty much it. Um, the way I look at it is I can sit here and I could wallow in misery and I could complain and I could, you know, be, Oh, this is awful. That's awful. Blah, blah, blah. And all I'm going to do is just amplify the way that feels. Yeah. Um, you know, if I can try to take even the most, I should say even one of the dark, you know, some of the darkest things that are happening to me, like my health. Um, you know, I'm not exactly a spring chicken at this point. Um, I'm not in great health, but at least most of my mind is still working. Um, and I can learn to laugh and point out the the absurdity of things yeah. and that almost um monty python-esque kind of way <laughs> oh that's a great analogy monty or python. um you know just kind of flowing with it like a robin williams would not that i'm nearly as funny as either of those guys looks notwithstanding mm -hmm. but <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I, and that's, that's, I love that you used both of those, uh, both Mon the Monty Python group and, and Robin Williams example is because there is, there does seem to be, um, like laughter does seem to be the best medicine. It's almost like gallows humor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I, when in my previous profession, you know, we were all miserable, but we bonded by that kind of dark humor. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, that just actually it, it's there's something relieving about that there's something that kind of takes a lot takes it takes the edge off and makes it a little bit easier i i, I think there's a uh a level of understanding mm -hmm. that happens um when you bond over the darkest things you know um like I was talking to a friend. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, pardon me, and they were, you know, lamenting the fact that they couldn't lose weight. Mm-hmm. And we're just having trouble losing weight. Well, I'm in the exact opposite end of the spectrum. I can sit here and eat plates of lasagna and not gain <laughs> any weight. So can I have some um, weight? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I looked at them and I was like, you know, she's like, well, you know, she didn't realize my health condition. Mm-hmm. She was like, well, what do you do? I was like... <laughs> Well, Body by cancer, you'll yeah. lose weight even if you don't want to, even if you die trying. Act and, now and, we'll... <laughs> yeah. and she just looked at me just with this, I can't believe you just said that. I was like, hey, I'm the one that has the cancer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's that's inc- that's funny. I mean, I can imagine, too, the, the look on her face like, what? Why could, how can you say that? Mm-hmm. But it's but that's that that's that, um, like you said, that gallows humor. And it kind of it, mm-hmm. it, it kind of takes it away. Um but, and that is funny too, and that and that is also kind of that whole thing about everything's relative, you know. Mm-hmm. In her in her mind, you know, she her 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 crisis, which is real to her, it's real, it's a real crisis. Exactly. Crisis. But then, you know, you never know, like. You know, and I would never take anything away from her for that either, exactly. because that is the thing that she is dealing with. That's her cross to bear, so exactly. to speak. I do think it's a testament to you, though, that she didn't know that. Because the way you carry yourself, and and I and I, because you do see some folks, and in some cases with less issues going on, there are some folks out there. We're all human, that tend to carry the cross with them, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, they t- you know the 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 term of you know, well, hey, woe is me, look at me, blah blah blah. And you don't strike me as that person. It's almost <sighs> like you're. I mean. I'm not saying we don't we you don't have down points down mm-hmm. down spots, but I think everybody does. Yeah, because we're human. Mm-hmm. But I do I do think that it's a testament that uh, that you carry yourself in a way that it's like oh by the way rather mm-hmm. than and for folks that don't that that aren't familiar with your situation I you know I I I, I understand there was a point where you didn't you weren't sure you were going to make it to to 2022 or. Or what um, when I was first diagnosed, I was given about nine months to live, and that would have been uh, October of 2020. Wow. Um, or no, 2021, excuse me. 2021. So I was not supposed to live past Halloween of 2021. Wow. And I'm still here. <laughs> well, thank, thank God, and, and you're, devi- you're defying the... The doctor, you know, the old adage where it's like the doctor gave me nine months and I couldn't pay the bill, so he gave me another nine months. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I, um, I t- to me, I just I can't I can't um, fathom how how that must feel. But in, in your perspective, and in, in, from the standpoint of, did it kind? I mean, I, I don't want to I I don't want to insult your situation by just making assumptions, but just asking it's it when, when you're told that by a doctor, obviously it's, it's devastating. Um, do you, do you start to think about like, all right, I gotta, gotta get all these, do all these things before then, or is it just, or is it paralyzing? I mean, I hate, I hate to put it that way, but you know, this, it just seems like, I don't know. It just seems like it could really knock the feet out from under you. Just out of uh, a wonderful sense of, or a wonderful happenstance of timing, um, my girlfriend broke up with me oh. the morning that I found out that I had cancer. It happened before, like you got. That she broke she... up with me before, and I knew I I figured that we were going to be separating. It wasn't a it wasn't a big negative fight or anything like that. She just had things that she wanted to do. I had things that I wanted to do, and we were just kind of holding each other back. Mm-hmm. So, uh, pure comedy of errors sort of thing. <laughs> like, my girlfriend breaks up with me, and I've got cancer, and I've got nine months to live. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> crap, what do, I, what do I really want to do? And yeah. it forced me to look at what I value in life. And what I value in life is life itself, not things not um accolades not celebrity not anything like that it's there's a lot of darkness in the world and this kind of this kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier but with all of the darkness in the world you can sit there and you can you can complain i can't see i can't see or you can be the light nice oh i love that absolutely 
and I choose at, I at least try to be the light you know sometimes that's a strobe light or a <laughs> or a black light because I used to go clubbing a lot back in the day <laughs> well and I'm, I'm, I want to segue a little bit I do want to um, ask how you got the that came up with the nickname Reverend Warlock is that I know you were in a band and also I, I do want to kind of touch on some of the your um, your religious past and just kind of how that reflects today that's actually um, exactly where it came from because uh, I was a minister a youth minister for several years I'm an ordained I'm an ordained minister still to this day um, so the reverend thing is actually legit it's nice. um but when i left the church because i was having disagreements with them and i don't want to go into all that history but let's just say it was bad um when i left people started calling me you know people started saying things like you've rebelled and rebellion is the sin is as the sin of witchcraft oh. and i was like if you're going to call me a witch get it right i'm a yeah, warlock, a warlock. <laughs> yeah, um is female. yeah but the other thing too is the actual definition of the word warlock means oath breaker and i broke my oath to a church that broke its oath to christ in my opinion um so it's it's also kind of catchy you know it is that, that's that's really i mean that's pretty gnarly that's pretty cool has that kind of sinister minister vibe to it <laughs> sinister i love it sinister yeah sinister minister now did you keep that when you went on with your 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 music kind of endeavors or oh yeah that's that's been um that's been a thing with me since i was about 23 um and then my most recent musical venture started in i want to say 2009 oh wow so yeah it's it's just been part of who i am very cool and this the sinister ministries of reverend warlock I, that sounds like its own podcast you know yeah <laughs> Now know. that I've got this, I might actually start doing a podcast. I, I think that would be awesome. I think I, mean, I feel like there's you have so much wisdom to to pass on to folks. And um, well, I mean, in the standpoint, I I think it is a testament. I I I'm, <coughs> I think you and I are very similar in that um, we both I have a religious kind of background. Um, I was never a minister or anything like that, but. Um, my folks, my mom and my mom my, married a, a Methodist minister, mm -hmm. and um, yet I'm a very cynical, realistic, like logic person, but I also can be very idealistic. And it's 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 that weird, you know, not uh, that dichotomy, that kind of contradictory mm -hmm. situation where I'm very skeptical, but I'm also very idealistic. And I think that like when it like kind of your situation i think it's it's it adds a lot where i don't know if it's this is my microphone i sometimes it's no no it's a noise in the hallway <laughs> uh, probably the great muda getting into something <laughs> no she's next to me i might have been a neighbor or something gotcha but the uh the whole thing about questioning i to me i feel like you know you you need to question your beliefs to make them stronger mm -hmm. or to get rid of the stuff that yeah, I find that I, I do feel like that, you know, that there's that there is a God, but I feel like humanity is what corrupts that whole the whole relationship. Yeah, that there's do you kind of see and maybe I'm not. I think much. I definitely think that there is. Um, I'm I'm hesitant to use the term God mm -hmm. um, just because it's a loaded term for a lot yes. of people. Uh, but I, I am of the opinion very strongly that there is something greater. But the problem is we have this tendency as humans to want to be right yes. about what we think. So we, we form these, oh, this is what I think. And if you don't think it, then you're wrong. Yeah. And you're and in some cases, you're going to burn in fire for mm -hmm. if you don't believe what I believe. Especially, be, you know, yeah, yeah. Because if you don't believe exactly the way I believe, my God who loves everything equally is going to punish you for eternity <laughs> for 80 or so years on the planet. Well, I think it's funny how even even just in the Christian faith that there's multiple sects, um, S-E-C-T-S, not, <laughs> not for just for people. You know, yeah, there was no sex when I was in the church. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. But the um, but there's there's so many just there's so many different beliefs in the Christian mm -hmm. faith that, you know, you who's right you know are the are the mormons right who you know, to, so i feel like it's it, it comes across very 
very condescending and presumptuous to just it is. to just say, "Hey, we're right." And you know, and you know, I, I, um, I a good friend of mine is a, a born again Christian, and one of the things that we would tangle on, and you know, I always kept it a, a lighthearted humor. We we'd never, only a couple times did we get into a serious, you know, argument. But it was you know, the one the one thing that always bothered with me was he he kind of looked at anybody that didn't believe like he did is is lesser. And, yeah. I, and I would point out, I said, well, you're you're viewing these folks over here, but, you know, you're not considering that their views they're, they're They could be right. You know, mm-hmm. What what makes what makes you feel that way? And I think it was we argued on the concept of truth. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, the truth is, but you can't use, like, he was trying to use the Bible to, to win an argument. And I said, you can't, especially if someone doesn't believe the Bible, but even so, and, and we got into the whole, you know, man's influence on it. And I don't want to uh, get, go down that rabbit hole, you, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It's, it, I find it, it's tough. I, I feel like it's tough to communicate with folks. Like you said, people want to be right. People and people, when they attach and it, and it's, and it's not just like religion. I mean, or it, religion, it could be not something could be secular from the standpoint of, it could be just a belief, a political belief, or mm-hmm. in, in some cases, WWE versus AEW. I was actually just thinking <laughs> that to, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. People, I think when people get an idea as part, and it becomes part of their identity, mm-hmm. that's when it's so hard to change their mind. It's like, and yeah, I'm a, I just recently quit teaching elementary school. I had been a teacher for 10 years. And one of, and the reason I left was because the, and it's not for CRT or any of this other stuff. What's really going on is they're really, they're really strong arming the teachers. They're really treating the teachers terrible. Mm-hmm. That seems to be going along on in, in every profession that the upper yeah. management's you know treating the lower folks. But uh, one of the things that we that, that which I is kind of interesting to... because uh, after the pandemic, it's like everybody was like, "Hang on, yeah, we're worth a lot more than you've been paying us." Exactly, exactly. You know, the, and um, I, that's a great segue to talk about in, in, a, in a moment because the the positives of the pandemic, I think, sometimes showed one thing that a lot of this business real estate isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, look what we're doing. You're, we're on two opposite sides of the country having a conversation. And yet there's, there's all these office buildings that really should just be collecting dust because you don't need. And a lot of them are empty. Yeah. My, my wife is a payroll manager for a hotel company. She works from home. And she and what's great about it too is she has better she is more efficient at home in her home office than at the at the office there because no one's coming by to bug her, mm-hmm. no one's knocking on her door, interrupting her, no one's coming like say hey let's go get lunch that kind of stuff. She can sit there and just boom knock stuff out. Yeah, and she's more efficient that way. And but there's yeah. no commute time. There's no getting ready to go to work. I can walk to the kitchen start mm-hmm. some coffee five minutes later have my coffee and i'm ready to go exactly exactly so i do think that there's a lot of there's a lot of positive there's a lot of positives that came out but it also kind of exposed mm-hmm. a lot of um i don't want to say rigged things but a lot of things that were kind of rigged in the favor of those at the top but kind of get back to what i was saying when i was teaching the uh we one of the things we would teach is the, is scientific method and scientific <laughs> inquiry. And one of the biggest, re- one of the reasons I became a teacher is I wanted to get young, young folks to think for themselves mm-hmm. and really to, and to separate themselves from their ideas from the standpoint of when you're doing a scientific inquiry, like let's say you're trying to see what, what happens when you, when you drop a Mentos in Coca-Cola, mm-hmm. you know, you're doing something like that. Your your hypothesis is not you. If your hypothesis is wrong, you, it doesn't make you a bad scientist. Yeah. It doesn't make you a wrong person. And I think that's a tough thing for people to get. It's the same thing for everything. You might you might think, um, well, you know, uh, you might think something like, ah, you know, I think maybe um, Anthony Fauci is a lizard person or something. I don't know. I'm just coming something random. Mm-hmm. Like when new information comes. 
you sh- you should be in a in a position where you're not so attached to your idea, yeah, your your theory that you can't take new information and then tweak or change your mind. Mm-hmm. And I think that's and a lot. Go ahead. For what it's worth, just real quick, um, I actually. Speaking of science and scientific classifications, I think if anything, Fauci's more of a rep of a uh, amphibian. So. <laughs> True, you're right. Yeah, both. Well, yes, well, he can. Uh, he's amphibious rather than lizard. Yes. Sorry. Uh, no, that, no, that's good. That's <laughs> well. What I do, I actually, um, um, my dad when he found out I was doing a podcast, he he wanted to to me to help him with with one he wants to do. He's a retired mm-hmm. Navy captain. And w- basically, it's me just getting him spun up because he is kind of a um, he 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 leans pretty far right, mm-hmm. um, and he's not, but he's he's not deep in far right, but he's but he's exactly what I was talking about. He's one of those guys that uh, he gets an idea and it's like a dog with a bone, mm-hmm. and you try to change his mind, he kind of well, I don't know about that. I so, grew up evangelical. And that was like part of growing up for me, like all the stuff that you now see coming out in like QAnon and those movements. I've known about that since the 80s. It was called the satanic panic back then, (laughs) you know, Um, and it's literally just the same thing, Mm -hmm. Um, recycled and rehashed and what have you. And I, and I think there, there's a there's a human it's a human nature thing I think sometimes to 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 kind of you you, you it, almost like when you get that idea if you if you're not purposely trying to be a critical thinker you start to what's the, there's a term for it you probably know it where you you almost seek only the evidence that justifies your position mm-hmm. you you tend to not not you look in. you look to things that are going to um... They're not going to challenge you. They're going to agree with you. Yes, yes. And and thus... Confirmation bias. Con- ah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was going to drive me nuts. Was just... it, was gonna, it was getting ready to drive me nuts, so I had to figure it out real fast. But And, and I think that's interesting how like media kind of uses confirmation bias, I think, to I, to just kind of push, you know, get clicks, get, mm-hmm. get their views. Um, and it's not even necessarily to push an agenda. It's to push it's, ratings. Yeah. I mean, when you really boil down to it, a lot of, a lot of stuff... It, I, I, th- I don't think is as sinister as it appears. I think so. mm-hmm. like a lot of it comes down to this. I think it's people. really easy to take little C conspiracies. Yes. yes. And blow them into there's a gigantic C conspiracy and it's all connected and yes. <laughs> somehow pizza is involved. And <laughs> yeah. like, don't bring pizza into this. Just leave pizza alone. Can we leave pizza alone? I'm still mad that... Um that the proud boys took away tiki torches because mm-hmm. you know i mean wh- what am i going to do with my luau exactly I, you know now <coughs> I, go to, I go to lowe's and i say i want to get four tiki torches they start looking at me going all right is this yeah guy, is this guy going to start uh, you know some kind of march i'm like no i just want to have a luau i got mm-hmm. we got a we got a little spigot and barbecue that's why you go in wearing the Hawaiian shirt with the lei and oh, probably no. <laughs> carrying the pig. The Hawaiian, the, yeah, well, the Hawaiian shirt, they, they kind of took that too. Yeah, so, that's yeah. true. <laughs> so it's it's like, um, I don't know, it, 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 you're damned if you do, damned if you don't in a lot of cases. But um, I don't know, I, I almost feel like we need to take the tiki torches back and say, no, no, tiki torches for everybody. But um, We need to figure I, out a way to do that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we got it. It's, it's and it's. I think people a lot of times get hung up on symbolism too. Oh yeah. And and um, like when the guy on Jeopardy was did the three for the third time, everybody a lot of people read into that as some as some kind. It's of, like a KKK thing, yeah. or and yeah. Just like, I just was doing the three, and and when John Cena was doing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> they were saying that it was like a symbol of KKK or six 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 is the other one that. Oh well, they yep. Because you know, there it is, six six six. Yeah, you got it. And six. It's, it, it's uh, well, you know, ignoring the this, you know, mm-hmm. and, or this instead. I, I do think though, and that that tends to be something that um, we see a lot with human nature is getting mm-hmm. caught up in, in that kind of stuff. This you know, symbolism, and then we you know, and like you said, taking a little C conspiracy and blowing it up to big C. Do you feel like? 
do you feel like we tend to give these conspiracies more credit and and specifically like i almost feel like we're it's not as sinister as it is it's it's worse than that most people really don't know what they're doing or or are driven by a more primitive like need for for money or do you think it's just like you think it's you think it's less <coughs> you think that human nature is more just where everybody's trying to figure it out <coughs> just everybody's going about it a different way i think that human nature is very much we want to be safe we want those who are close to us to be safe and we want to feel as though we're part of a community mm-hmm. and um again going back to the pandemic and just that um, what was it like almost two years where the only real contact anybody had was via the internet yeah and all of this stuff just blew up and people were going to what attracted them yes you know That's if they saw own- echo chambers if you will exactly if they blamed the government they were going to look for stuff to blame the government if they blamed religion they were going to look for something that blamed religion if they um you know if they thought tony khan was responsible for the pandemic they were going to bash aew um it was just it's just that sort of i have to stick with my group Mm -hmm. and you create your own group even if that group may be exploiting you yes I, I, very well said. It's kind of like um, I, I felt like uh, like prior to social media where it is, prior to social media, like there was just one village idiot, but now all the village idiots can communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. They could have a blog called Vill- Village Idiot Blog, where every village idiot in every village now there's now there's like ten thousand village idiots all talking to each other. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, yeah, there's more idiots like me. Woo. And agreeing with each other and amplifying each other. Exactly. And it's... exactly. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, one of my one of my one of my favorite things to do, and then now you know, my dad uh, wanting to do his podcast. I'm my role is basically getting him spun up. And mm-hmm. I'll sit there and I'll just ask him a question. I'll say, so what did you what did you think about Hillary Clinton's da da da? And he'll go, oh, and he'll just start going off, and and it's it's it's. I don't want to say I get a kick out of it, but it's just, it's, I do, because I do want my dad to, I do have respect for my dad and I want him to be a critical thinker, but it is kind of fascinating. Again, that dog with a bone, um, once you get something in your head and, you know, having these social net, these social media groups, it's almost like kerosene on a flame. Mm -hmm. It's like, cause now you've got all these voices justifying you know, your, yourself and then kind of getting back to and specifically like like on Twitter, I've noticed, you know, I'll post something very positive. I'll get maybe three or four likes. Yeah. And and I'm sure more people have seen it, whatever. And it, and some some people are just OK. And, and, you know, a lot of people argue, oh, there's an algorithm. Oh, you're being shadow banned, blah, blah, blah. And, it, and I can see where that feels like that. Mm-hmm. But what I noticed is it's the negative stuff that gets the attention yeah and one of the questions i want to ask you kind of to get into the twitter stuff is do you feel like 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 you'll notice like i had to i had to mute um cringe wrestling takes was a was an account that would they would retweet or they Mm -hmm. would screenshot a bad wrestling take and share it with everybody and usually it's that wwe junkie guy or all these you know garrett mm-hmm. somebody neck beard and a lot of them back in the day at least back when i was following them on my old account mm-hmm. it was funny yeah and it was you know this is a really bad take uh just from somebody who doesn't seem to understand what they're talking about and it seemed if if i if i'm following where you're going with this mm-hmm. it seemed to be more attacks well and I... Yeah, I mean, more so like, um, where's the like, where's the line? And and I and I don't know, like myself, I don't have a solid thought on this because on one hand, I think sometimes it it is funny, like, mm-hmm. what, what what's wrong with this person? Or it's it's I think sometimes it it helps you understand how unhinged some folks can be mm-hmm. with regards, like, because it's like, why why do you care so much about a show that I like? And you know we're we're you know having to tear that down. But on the other hand, just by retweeting that and getting it out there, 
it almost amplifies yeah the the negative take do you do you, do you kind of see it that way or kind mm-hmm. of in between it, it gives oxygen to negativity and it creates a situation where if you agree you uh, you kind of have to be making fun of somebody else or mocking someone else and that just i i just i'm not into that you know it's like like i say i've been watching since 79 so <clears throat> i've seen everything i was there for black saturday i was there for um you know the attitude era uh like i i talked to a lot of people who are like yeah i started watching in the attitude era and i'm like man i'm old oh my <laughs> well, I, my my first big uh, wrestling when I was when I was a wee lad was um, my first big experience was WrestleMania uh, six was actually oh wow I mean well granted I mean I had been paying attention before that like when I was like mm-hmm. you know like wee elementary school you know they had the superstars wrestling cartoon and we would we were more we were actually more familiar with the cartoon characters than the actual wrestling okay and so it was kind of surreal to like watch Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant interact on the cartoon and Roddy Piper and his Piper mobile and mm-hmm. then later to see the actual like the actual re- guy like whoa that's a real person oh oh this is crazy um Jake the Snake was one of our faves back yep. then um and I well, Jake to- is still one of my favorites oh hands down and his whole story with DDP is tremendous mm-hmm. that, that whole situation um he is a guy who inspires me yes and he see, he still seems to be, you know, like even last night he was on he he came back out with a murder hawk last night or um uh, not last night Wednesday was it yeah it was last night on Rampage mm-hmm. he uh, he came out with uh, murder hawk um, again and he you know, even though he's you know he's still having the to have the the tank with him with the uh, the the thing he's he's still going and I, I he is somebody that can be inspiring you know his whole story mm-hmm. but. Um, I also, up until about when he won the title, I was an Ultimate Warrior fan. Until mm-hmm. he won, beat Hogan, and then he, it just seemed like he kind of fell off with me for a while. But um, yeah, I, I was so, very much into the hype of the Ultimate Warrior. Yes. Um, but again, looking at it as somebody who the the wrestling that I grew up on was, um, our neighbors were from Georgia. And they were uh, one of the first people that I'd ever met who had a cable box. Oh. And the reason they had a cable box was so they could get WTBS to watch Braves games and Gordon's wrestling. Oh, nice. Gordon's wrestling. Gordon's wrestling. Yes. Um, so we would go over there and watch, the, you know, the 605 or 305 on this coast mm-hmm. uh, Saturday show back when it was Georgia Championship Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all through how it became uh, Crockett and then WCW. And um, so I was there watching all of that. Oh, that's cool. (coughs) But, uh, you know, Warrior came along. He was a hype guy. Mm -hmm. He just went in there. Boom, boom, boom. It was done. That was kind of cool. And then it started just getting very, very old because you realized this guy can't really wrestle. Yeah. This guy can't really work a match. It, 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 he was a great pop, but then when you when you'd had to had to go long term, you start to go, okay, wait a minute. Like I, I remember, um, I remember popping so hard when um, the honky tonk man, uh, he, he, I guess Bruce got beat up, so he didn't have a challenger. Mm-hmm. So Ultimate Warrior comes out, oh, and then everybody's like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. And squashes him in like thirty seconds. Do you do you feel like? Because um, it sounds like you and I are both coming from old school wrestling. I mean, I. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm probably yeah you know, I'm an '80s kid, mm-hmm. um, and that was kind of when I really started getting into it. And then I, I faded. You know, I would back and forth. Like I would go away for a while, come back around attitude. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, bear in bear in mind too. I started watching when I was like five, mm-hmm. so I've been watching from a very very young age, yeah. as yeah. well as watching for a long time. It's it's kind of in our DNA, I think, a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. if we when you're when you're that young and you're just like, oh. We, these like superheroes that w- could be on a comic book are coming to life. Mm-hmm. These 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 super super you know these superhuman characters are just there. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, and this could be kind of like because there's always been you know before there was there was the internet and social media there there were 
there were articles, there were there were magazines, mm -hmm. you know, there were reviews here and there. Do you feel like with social media, everyone's become more more of a critic and less of a fan, or do you think uh, kind of like where they're dissecting stuff that happens more than just sitting back and enjoying? I very strongly feel that actually. Like there are times where I'll see commentary or um, people talking about a particular thing online, and I'm like, "Can you just sit back and enjoy it?" <laughs> you do. I'm so sorry that Kenny Omega's footwork was a little bit off on that sequence. <laughs> How about the rest of the freaking match? Yeah, it, you yeah, know, like, like oh, sky, oh, sky blue, Mister Mark. Well, you know that never happens in professional football. That never happens. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody misses a field goal. Nobody, you know. Yeah. And and it's it seems strange to me. Like I I see that almost in a lot of a lot of stuff too, like TV shows and movies now, where instead of just wow, um, that that episode was great, that episode was terrible, people go more like what they sh you know I would have cast this person and I would have done that mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm kind of like well. You know, and the other thing, the other thing too that I've noticed is there's this. Well, if you don't follow every aspect of a certain thing, you're not really a fan. Yeah. And for me, that makes me not want to be a fan anymore. Yeah. Like a perfect example is Star Wars. <laughs> I grew up, you know, I grew up loving Star Wars. Um, first three movies I thought were great. Mm -hmm. Second three movies, meh. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was like, well, have you read the books? Have you read this? What about this? Don't you know about that? I'm like, I said I like Star Wars. <laughs> Don't crucify me, please. It, I'm, it, you know, yeah. sorry I haven't watched The Mandalorian. I've had other things to, to attend to, like cancer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had other things on my mind. I, um, it's almost like, you know, you know like the, the famous uh, uh, William Shatner rant on Saturday Night Live where he goes, Crying out loud! It's just a TV show, and yep. And it, I um, but I, I do I, I do think some people that get really into their fandom, I, I I don't I try not to let it bother me up until the point where like you said where it's like well you're not a real fan if you don't blah 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 mm -hmm. you know like I enjoy watching AEW Dark I enjoy Elevation and there's things yeah. that that happen on there that that bleed into Dynamite or what have you and. And like even BT, but I feel like in that case, it's more of like if there's Easter eggs that happen on Dynamite that it rewards the people that were watching those other things. You mm -hmm. know, it rewards them, but it doesn't. Um, it doesn't detract from the rest of the story. Exactly, but you could you could just tune in to Dynamite and and have it have it work out for you. Mm -hmm. But um, I see. And sometimes the the stuff that goes on and like um, just even social media. Mm -hmm. um we'll play into that like um i'm pretty sure everybody who knows me uh is aware of the fact that i'm a good a huge fan of nyla rose nyla her feud with serpentico <laughs> yes. is like my favorite thing in pro wrestling mm -hmm. um i don't know why it's just that's it's hilarious it's hysterical to me it is. And they're and they're both very funny. I mean, they both, they 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 have a very they have a great rapport. Mm -hmm. um, let's be honest. Nyla Rose wins the internet almost on a daily basis. Oh yeah. She, she not so much recently. I haven't seen her post much recently, but um, she definitely deserves the Twitter belt, the Twitter champion. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, what I, what I like to I don't know if you've noticed, but it, it seems like recently, you know, the more they let her be, her. Mm -hmm. on the show rather than the beast yeah because at first she was the native beast and mm -hmm. you know all this and me but the more she she's always going to be the native beast to me though so yeah yeah but i mean but what i mean is more than that the, oh yeah like the i love cake <laughs> mm -hmm. or and you know, when she started they let started letting her be more her she um, is going to inadvertently become a huge baby face just yeah. because of her personality and i think she already is in a lot yeah. of ways I, I think she is. I think she like is. it's not that hard turn necessarily. It's just yeah. like, oh yeah, it's Nyla. We love her. Well, it makes me wonder what they're going to do if they are going to do an a, a women's blood and guts where it's the originals versus the outsiders, if you will. 
Mm -hmm. She's clearly an AEW original. Yep. And uh, Marina Shafir is an outsider. You know, she was she was with the WWE camp, and it almost seems like I've I've watched so, the um, tag up on Dark, and there's they're 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 experimenting with breaking Nyla away from Vicky and Marina. Mm -hmm. you know, where so I'm wondering if that's what they're kind of setting up is that Nyla and Marina are going to split. Nyla's going to join the AW Originals. And but you're right, Nyla is a babyface despite being trying, you know, portraying herself as a heel. Yeah, you know, she's she's kind of one of those, you know, anti heroes that she, that you that you can't you can't hate mm -hmm. because I mean it, it, she she and, and it's it's her sense of humor, um, the stuff that she does, and I and I and I'm I'm glad that they're really letting her use that humor a little bit more frequently. Mm -hmm. They're letting her be more of herself, and I think that's great. I actually, um, there was uh, Dynamite came to Seattle mm -hmm. back in January, yeah, and I didn't get to go, and it was the most freaking heartbreaking thing because I had a sign that just had was like a one of those, uh, sticker name tags it says hello my name is uh -huh. and it was hello my name is mark ass kevin <laughs> just because i wanted her to you know even if she wasn't there i knew that she would see it the people who knew me would see it um and then you know i never got i didn't get to go and it was just like oh man uh, this sucks uh when they come back we got it we got a campaign to have you have you go in some way we got to talk to we got to talk to kel and make make that happen. Get Kel to to get you there. Got to talk um, to Tony. Yeah, well, Tony. I'll yeah. I'll just go directly to Tony. Right. And <laughs> be like, look, dude, I know where to get all the best coffee in this town. <laughs> you do. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh. Let's go. I um I was on the I was messing around the uh, Fuego uh, Twitch stream, which if you get a chance, it's actually pretty fun. He's he's actually pretty funny on the on the on his Twitch. Nyla's funny on her Twitch stream. Too. Oh yeah. But uh, we were doing a, like a Jackbox game where you had to draw characters and like wrestling characters. And um, the question, and you had to like, it's like almost like Pictionary where they give you a prompt and you have to draw a character that matches that prompt. And the prompt was, who's the most likely to uh, pull an all nighter? So I had to draw Tony Khan and I drew a Tony Khan like written, you know, in his, you know, um, super excited punk mm -hmm. state. And um and it's and it had him going oh, let's book it let's book it that kind of thing and uh, of course hands down I became I was the champion I won nice the contest, but but um I do think Tony Khan gets a lot of unfair heat so do and, I and I think it's what I, one of the things I love about Tony Khan like and as early on aside from probably similar to you he got the, the whole AEW thing got me back into wrestling mm -hmm. I had I had stopped watching for almost a decade. Yeah, and then got just I I heard Jericho was going to this new promotion, and I was a big Jericho fan back when he first debuted um, against The Rock. He was the you know Y two J, and um, and I was and I um, I was actually I actually got kicked out of a restaurant actually at Hooters um, on we watched Vengeance at live at Hooters, and I was the only one in the place that was rooting for Jericho. Everybody else was either Rock or Stone Cold. And I, by the time, you know, about four pitchers in, pitchers of beer in, and he wins, and I was going, break the walls down, standing on the table going, break the walls down. So they had to ask me politely to leave before they yeah. used my head to open the door. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think... For time, me, go ahead. Um, I think what really got me back into being excited about wrestling was when there was that big indie explosion kind of right around the same time that you had like everything going on with bullet club in japan yes. and um there was just this it seemed like out of nowhere like defy shows up and um mlw shows up and it's just like whoa there's all of this other great wrestling and i don't know who half these people are but they're fantastic and i yes. want to get to know who they are um and then that of course grew into all in which grew into aew so yeah 
and it's I, for me, it was kind of right there. Like I, I missed the all in experience, but I got to go back and watch it and, mm-hmm. and, and go, oh wow, this is great. And that's it's like I feel like so many of us were starved for that. And yeah, again, inter- internet, social media, as as the internet and social media and access grew, we were able like used to be you had to you had to go find somebody to trade a tape of a of a New Japan yep. match from years ago. Um, the first time I'd ever I really, did that. <laughs> First time I ever really heard of like the real jab. I lived in Japan for a couple of years as a kid, and you know j- wrestling was really big there. But their like the, one of their wrestlers was a tiger mask, a guy that had a tiger mask on, and I was like, oh, that guy's so cool. He's, and then you know I come to the states and it's, I don't hear about it, and then um, then all of a sudden it's like you hear you're hearing about all these new folks, and you're and you're like I want to learn more about this. Who's like or you're like who's Darby Allen? I'm like find yeah. out who this guy is or. What orange Cassidy? Oh, mm-hmm. This guy's hilarious. Yeah, that that kind of stuff. Um, real quick, I'm not sure if you have seen the uh, Wrestle Kingdom where the Kenny Omega and uh, Kazuchika Okada had like the 12 star match or whatever it was. Was it just the two of them? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. I, I think um, it was... earlier there's actually a Tiger Mask match. Oh. Where he's, uh, I think it was uh, Tiger Mask versus uh, Dark Tiger. Because oh, it, oh. it was literally ripped right from the cartoon. Oh, I got I to gotta look that up. So yeah, and Kevin it. Kelly and uh, I think it was Don Callis on Probably commentary. Was. Yeah. Trying to, trying to sell it, and you can tell that they're reading a script. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Dark, Dark Tiger is, uh, <coughs> you can tell they're probably, they'll cover their microphone. Mm-hmm. What are we? What are we talking about? You know, and Ke- and Kevin was doing a great job, and he had yeah. that very. This is obviously I'm talking to kids thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was Tiger Mask versus Tiger the Dark. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> at Wrestle at Wrestle Kingdom, you know? I, I get a kick, especially early on uh, when Jr. was came to AEW, and some of the stuff that he like, like Orange Cat, you could clearly tell that. Orange Cassidy was a new thing for mm-hmm. JR. And it took JR a while to get Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. He, he came around, but the that first couple, like when he um when he showed up at I think it was all out, he showed up to save the best friends from the Dark Order. Mm-hmm. And he uh, and you could just hear in JR's voice, he's just kinda like, Well, there's this guy. He, he he's taking it easy. Uh what you know, that that kind of thing. And I I actually love that about the yeah. fact that it was like they didn't they didn't smarten him up to what was going on in AEW. They're just like, but, here you go. But that goes back to I think another uh, appealing aspect of AEW is, I mean, it's it's choreographed wrestling, but it they they're very I won't say behind the curtain, but they're they're very they're, they don't really try to snow pull the wool over your eyes mm-hmm. too much. You know, they're, they're and like the rapport. If you ever get a chance to check out Dark. The rapport that Excalibur and Taz have. Oh they, yeah, they get each other in hysterics. The stuff. Mm-hmm. I also think Jr. is another example of that. Uh, people getting way too much heat than they deserve. Mm-hmm. You know, he'll he'll botch it like quote unquote botch. I hate that term. Yeah. He'll botch something like he called. He said uh, WWE champion. I mean, you're talking about a guy that had been a WWE commentator for years, mm-hmm. and suddenly you know he he makes a slip or something like that. It's like. Why? Why is that a big deal? You know, or he'll why, call why you... Brian Danielson Daniel Bryan. Yeah, you know, so like you're still doing the yes chance and mm-hmm. everything. It's 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 what what's the what's the big deal? But one of the things I like about Tony Khan, and I don't know if you see this, but like I saw this early on, is how he see, he tends to switch between like I've seen seen him switch between he'll he'll have this business persona. Mm-hmm. And then he'll have the fanboy persona. Yeah, and I've seen it him switch even sometimes mid sentence. Like I, if I was at a or one of the early scrums where mm-hmm. they weren't even sitting at a table; they were just standing there. And he's talking to one of the reporters, and he's like, "Well, the third quarter earnings for for the third quarter projections for Dynamite seem to be at an all time high." And boy, that Kenny Omega Moxley match was just oh, that was so cool. Yeah, yeah. Like he'll just switch, and and I love that because it, I think that you need to be a fan. Of what of your art of, of what you're doing mm-hmm. to tr- and, and it translates to to the product. Yeah. I don't know if, if you, um, the other thing too is I think that's just who he is. I think yeah. that's part of his personality is he's got that uh, 
sharp, hard business acumen. Yeah. But at the same time, he's kind of a big kid, mm -hmm. you know, and he's very passionate about what he loves. Um, and that happens to be pro wrestling. Uh, I wish I wish more people could keep one foot in their childhood, you know, mm -hmm. because I think I, I, one, this is one of the things I told all my my students. I taught mostly third grade. <laughs> Is don't <coughs> don't try to grow up too fast. Just, you know, yeah. Don't don't try because and I and I always would say because you're gonna get bills or mortgage. You get you know when you start having to deal with all these headaches, but more so, you know the the wor the most pr heartbreaking thing is to see when that child inside break like dies. Mm -hmm. You know when that when people are trying to be an adult too much and they don't take time to to enjoy those things. Yeah, uh, it's funny because I I collect um, a lot of. <laughs> Almost too many. My wife will say too many wrestling figures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's been cubing the other room. She goes, "Yep," but uh, you know, I but I I take them out of the box and I and I'm you know I'll, I'll sit there and sometimes and I'll play with them. I'll do something yeah. just and that's to me that's fun. And it like I see I see a lot of folks where like look at my collection. They'll have this big wall and they're still in the box and that's fine because they you know they're collectors. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like there's there's the I I feel, I, I feel like I did when I was when I was eight years old and I'd go to Toys R Us, you know, and I'd, yeah. like, I'd find the, oh, look, oh, this is the cool thing. So to me, I, I like that. And I, and I, and I just wish, I hope people can find ways, whatever that is to recapture that feeling mm -hmm. when you're a kid. Oh. It's like, <sighs> yep. there's almost that feeling of it's a toy. Why aren't you playing with it? <laughs> exactly. You're wasting your toy. And in the movies, the Toy Story movies hit for adults um, for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know that because of that, I think that touching into that that uh, excitement a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, um, and that memory of those favorite toys that you played with that wore out, exactly, or that you or that broke or that got sold or whatever. It was. I I remember when I um, we were moving and um, I gave away. I had a big box of GI Joes. And I gave this this uh, family next door. The uh, parents just got divorced. The father moved to Texas, and the mom was you know she was struggling to raise two kids, and she had the little kid, the little little boy. He he didn't they didn't have much, and and I gave away my GI Joes to him, mm -hmm. and it meant the world. He had all these GI Joes playing with them all the time, and then we moved, and I remember being like. Like I wish I still had them, and I was like, well, you, know, you just did this awesome thing to help yeah. the poor kid. But there's that, you know, I was so mad. I was mad at myself for being mad at myself for giving them away. Like I was like, how? That's a good way of putting it. That's like, a great like, way of putting it. How dare you feel bad? Feel mad at yourself for giving away for giving a kid joy? Mm -hmm. like, but I wish I had my snake eyes. You know, that's exactly. Like <laughs> it's like I still want my storm shadow sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Were you a G.I. Joe collector, too, or a G.I. Joe fan? I was a huge G.I. Joe collector, um, partly because they were way, way, way less expensive than wrestling figures. Yeah. And at the time, the wrestling figures were just kind of stuck in one position. Yeah, yeah. They, were like they, they, they couldn't do anything. So I would like, I built a wrestling ring for my G.I. Joe figures. Oh, no way. And like made uh, championship belts out of like foil and uh, the little tie things yeah. from bread. Little bread ties. Oh, that's yeah. early. Yeah. Oh, um, so cool. You know, and I had my own like wrestling federation. Uh, the whole nine yards had tag team champions, TV champions. You were the, uh, you were the Booker. You were the. You were the. Yeah. Um, did, you have a, did you have like a GI Joe versus Cobra for Forbidden Door or something? Or. Um, it wasn't really like that. It was just yeah. like. I had guys that I like certain figures that I liked more than others. So they were the heel, the faces and yeah. the heels were just like, Oh, these guys, you know, the, and I, I bet the dreadnoughts were an awesome faction. Oh yeah, they were. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, they were like, uh, I almost want to say they were my NWO before there was, was an say, NWO. Yeah, I was going to say they're the NWO, but yeah, I had, I used to collect all kinds of action figures that were around that same size, mm -hmm. like Star Wars, uh, the Fisher Price adventure. Oh, the adventure, yeah, adventure people. Adventure and like, there was one of them that always had the crooked arm, uh -huh. like the perpetually crooked arm. He was my commentator. Oh, because he could hold a mic. And I would just put a little microphone in their hands, and they would oh, go, you know, go around, you know. 
that's so cool. I I had the muscle figures also, the little pink mm-hmm. little pink guys, and um, they 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 had a wrestling ring for them, but it stunk. It, it was because it was just you had to put them in this little thing. And it was it was almost like they tried to make it a miniature version of Rock'em Sock'em Robot. Yeah, but it kept breaking. So I went and got a shoebox, and I made it was more of a square than you know like your traditional shoebox. And I, I made a wrestling ring out of that, and that became their ring. I, See, but I, I never thought to do use the bread ties and aluminum foil for the belts, though. That, oh, I wish I did that. That's that's gnarly. Um, that was uh, one of the things, too. Also, I was such a huge nerd that I wanted to know exactly how a wrestling ring was built. Oh, cool. And I was in a really, really small town at the time, so we did not get a lot of wrestling. Uh, that came through. I think in the entire time that I was there, I only saw two times where a wrestling show came through. Mm -hmm. One of them was NWA. Wow. And like 10 years later, we got a WWF show. Um, But the NWA show was a thousand times better. Um, because WWE was it a house show or was it? It was a house show. It was uh, the main event, if I remember correctly, was Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus Ted DiBiase. Oh, cool. Um, and it was like uh, the Powers of Pain versus the Bolshevik versus um, Sheik and Volkov. Oh, cool. Um, right after they had turned babyface. Mm Uh, Hercules versus Ken Patera. Wow. Um, you know, it was like a, a B or a C show, but still. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't even the Viasi, was it? I don't. I can't remember who all was there, but. Could have been. But the what made the NWA show better is what do you think it was your age, your mentality at the time? It was my age, and and also the uh, the headline, because um, it was being run in conjunction with. Uh, Portland, which I didn't even know existed at the time. <laughs> um, like literally up until I started getting into the tape trading, mm-hmm. I grew up in Wenatchee, Washington, which is like halfway between Spokane and Seattle. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I didn't, I was completely unaware that Portland even existed. How pathetic is that? Yeah, Portland might as well be Narnia, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, the main event, and like I say, uh, there were some guys from Texas that were coming up. There were some guys from Florida that were coming up. The main event was Dusty Rhodes versus Kabuki. Oh, wow. Oh, I bet that was cool. That was really, really cool because I also worked at, uh, well, worked. <clears throat> My family ran one of the local diners. Oh, and cool. so the wrestlers were coming into the diner all morning. Oh, that's got to be surreal. And what was really surreal is my mom was a fan and a mark. <laughs> And at one point, Gary Hart and Kabuki came in right after Dusty Rhodes had come in. Oh, that's cool. And so she had them sitting in different parts of the restaurant where they couldn't see each other. And she's like, no, I don't want any, I don't want any trouble from you guys. Way to go, mom. Keep the kayfabe. You know, she was, it was like, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I, my job was basically run around and refill coffee. <laughs> oh, cool. So I'm like running around, going over, taking Dusty Rhodes coffee, going over, taking Gary Hart and Kabuki coffee, trying not to freak out because it was Kabuki and he was the scariest human alive. Right? And you're like, don't, you don't want to get his uh, coffee wrong. Mm hmm. And I bet Dusty Rhodes was like, he's probably like, hey, little buddy, let me get a little creamer for you. <laughs> he, he, he calls me up and he's like, so let me, t- let me ask you a question here. You coming to see me wrestle tonight? You coming to hear, you go come see me watch Kab- uh, beat up Kabuki tonight? And I was like, well, we were going to, but we couldn't afford the tickets, you know, because we were living, you know, yeah. poor family, living hand to mouth, kind of having to put everything back into the restaurant. I was like, will you do me a favor? You tell your mama and you to come to the ticket Box. office and tell them Dusty sent you. So we got in and got uh, front row uh, to see Kabuki versus Dusty Rhodes. Oh, my goodness. Um, And I I remember that Playboy Buddy Rose was there as well, but I don't remember who. Playboy Buddy Rose. Oh, he was awesome. Yeah. In fact, uh, we uh, we used to do do our own 
very very poor version of wrestling my when my friends and i you know we we it's the kind where until somebody gets hurt and we have to call someone's mom you know, mm-hmm. and uh i was always playboy buddy rose i would stuff a pillow under my shirt, and I, and I would be, all, I'd always be like, oh, but I was, I was like, and then do a bunch of push-ups. Exactly, like, oh, oh, oh yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, and um, that that was, I bet, I bet he was awesome to watch. He was a he was a blast to watch in the ring, um, and that was actually kind of when I started watching it differently, mm-hmm. um, because it wasn't on TV. I got to see everything up close. Mm-hmm. <coughs> And noticing the the way people moved and, you know, the different, I don't like to use the term choreography because football could be called choreography in that respect, um, or baseball. Um, you, you go through the motions so much that it becomes rote. Um, but that was when I got to see it up close for the first time. And um, as they were tearing the ring down, I just stayed and watched because I wanted to know what a wrestling ring was made of. Cool. And is that when you, you saw the boards and you saw that's the when I saw the boards and the metal things and realized how the uh, ring posts actually worked and held things together. And... Were you were you at that time starting to think, you know, if I go to, if I get some boards and I get an old mattress or, or I don't know, were you starting to think plan how you were going to build your own ring at home? Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, which was funny because I didn't really have anybody that I was, you know, super friendly with that would watch wrestling. And when I brought up wrestling, everybody's like, okay, whatever. Oh, you know, it's fake, bro. You know, it's fake, right? Oh, jeez, that, that used to kill me. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, I bet that was surreal. I bet that was so cool. And yeah. I like, it was, it was nuts. Um, I didn't really have anybody that I was real good friends with around my age until I was like 16. Mm-hmm. And then I met uh, this guy, John, and to this day, he's my little brother. Oh, cool. Like, little, little John. Does that make you Robin Hood? If he's the um, <laughs> maybe. I, I just need to find some rich people to rob from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, I can figure out a few, but that's cool. And um, I, see, I, I never, for growing up, um, when I hit my teens, n- none of my friends really wanted to get, got into wrestling like I was. I was still doing that like planning cards you know i was almost like like tony Khan where i'd have a notebook mm-hmm. i was doing my own like you know weekly show kind of thing and uh yeah same right mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like... and then i anytime i try to tell tell what i was doing to my friends they would just look at me like no man oh, yeah, we need to go down to the beach man go to the club man mm-hmm. all right whatever meanwhile i'm like waiting for the newest edition of, you know, whatever the WWE video game coming out is so I can recreate all of these cause that I've done over the years. Every time, like, here comes the pain. My, I go right into create a wrestler mode. Mm-hmm. I, I have to get my 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 usual cr- yep. uh, characters in there. I'm excited about um, uh, Fight Forever. Fight Forever. Yep. Yeah, I've seen some of it, like some of the images, mm-hmm. and it... It looks really good. Yeah. Honestly, like I'm, I'm hoping that it is half as good as it looks. I I, I feel more confident because they're taking their time with it. Mm-hmm. You know that they're not. I don't. And I think a lot of that's you know Kenny and everybody. They they know how important this first game is. And mm-hmm. so, and and we you and I know when it does come out, there's going to be the trolls the trolls are going mm-hmm. to come out and they're going to bash every little thing but it's I, I do think that they're taking their time and to really make sure it's it's a quality game i think so too honestly and, and I'm, ex- I'm i'm excited about it and i'm not going to you know flip out if if there's only a handful of wrestlers on the roster cuz you know they're going to they're going to have update, updated dlc packs mm-hmm. they already said that ftr is going to be i think part of an owen hart pack or something like that mm-hmm. that's going to be released and I, and I don't mind that besides like you said if they got create a wrestler i'm good yep <laughs> awesome well reverend we've been over an hour this we have awesome yeah this okay has been, this has been pretty awesome i mean we could go another hour if you want but um um uh, i don't think at the moment i'm really up for it i would right. love to but 
Uh, can we take a rain check and do this again yeah, sometime? Because I've had a blast. I've had a blast as well. I would love to get back on. And, um, you know, I am actually uh, a buddy of mine and I are, are, are we, uh, we get this uh, because there's not enough of them out there. A friend, my friend Shane and I are, are thinking about starting a wrestling podcast because there's not a whole lot of them out there. You know, wrestling podcast, mm -hmm. very few. You know, uh, yeah. I've noticed, I've noticed on YouTube, there's not a whole lot of people talking about wrestling. I, I know it's, and it's, it's so weird. It's a need. So we're going to come up with, I'm going to show you that this is what I'm thinking. It's called another wrestling podcast. And that's just the, the name we're, we're, we're going on with. I like it because Hey, that's another wrestling podcast. Guess what? <laughs> yeah. More people telling their opinion on wrestling, but I'd love to have you pop on for that. And I'd love to have you pop back on for, uh, Mental Health Mondays. Uh, Absolutely. Like, um, you and I seem to be kindred spirits here. I think uh, we, we see things a lot very similar. Ever um, since we first bumped into each other on Twitter, yep. honestly. Yep. I, I, I've had that feeling. It's been it's been a real pleasure. Uh, any any final thoughts? Um, any final thoughts to or words of wisdom, if you will, to those out there that are just they're they're maybe struggling with something going on. So they're something in their cabeza there or is there any any words of wisdom to pass on to the three or four listeners i'm gonna have as as i like to say when i'm whenever i'm doing something like this to both of you um, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um when it comes to mental health one of the things that uh is a real pain in the ass is when people come up and say you know that's all in your head right yes um, I would just like to remind you that you are fully within your rights and responsibilities to look at them and say, no shit, Sherlock. That's why it's <laughs> called mental illness. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's, it, I think the worst thing you can do is, is tell somebody, you know, just, you know, stop being so weird or crazy. I, Don't think about it so much. Yeah, why, you know, just, just suck it up. Ooh. You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, Reverend, it has been an honor, a privilege. I look forward to uh, chatting with you again many times and definitely back and forth on the in the Twitter sphere. Welcome back! Oh yes, celebration by the way. Maybe next time I will have Muda. Yeah. Oh, oh, if we could get a Muda sighting, if we could get a Muda and, and Kitty Omega to join up, maybe they could do a podcast together. That would be awesome. We got Kitty Omega around here. Um, I've got Daryl floating around. Daryl. Daryl, uh, what's the namesake from? Is it from? From uh, NJPW. Oh, very cool. Very um, cool. Uh, uh, not Takahashi's, Tanahashi. Not Tanahashi's, Takahashi's. Takahashi, not Tanahashi. Yeah. Little kitty mascot. Oh, that's so cool. That's really cool. Well, Rev, uh, take care. I'm going to I'm gonna stop us here, then we could chat afterwards, and then uh, I'll let you get going. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Mental Health Mondays, my chat with the Reverend Warlock. Please go to Twitter and make sure you follow the great Muda and his human, the Reverend Warlock. Also, like, share, subscribe. Let us know how this, uh, if you enjoyed this uh, first episode, what your thoughts are. I am already aware of the microphone issues. I'm working on that. We're working on some stuff around. But thank you so much for listening. And make sure you uh, comment. Let us know how we're doing. If there's any ideas or topics you'd like us to, to look at. And thank you so much. Have a great week. And let's just remember, in the words of Batty McGrath, we woke up today. So let's have a great day. Bye, everybody.